Hi everybody. Hey, it's Becky from PowerToolsWithThread.com. That's my blog. My husband got a hole in one of his Carhartt t-shirts. So I thought this would be a great time to uh, break out my new Brother Airflow 3000. And I have had the Brother 1034D lock for years and years and years. The scariest thing about using a serger is that they're, they can be difficult to thread. So you might be going, well, what is a serger? You don't, you know, there's a serger, there's, it, there, it's also called an overlocker. A serger, you probably have something on right now, hopefully you have something on right now, that, <laughs> that has a serged seam in it. And I'll show you. So this is the inside of the t-shirt. And let me pull up this seam. Uh, anytime you wear a t-shirt, I guarantee you, you're wearing a serged garment. So see that? The serger completely encloses the raw edges and trims it at the same time. There is a knife on the machine that trims the fabric at the same time. And they are the perfect power tool with thread to use when you've got holes in t-shirts that need repair. So let me find this hole here. I put it through the wash. I don't want to be sewing on a stinky shirt, right? But there it is right there. And you can see how the thread held up right here, but it came loose. And so this needs repaired. And it's a very easy fix to do if you've got the right machine. So I'm just going to start surging up here and just go all the way down and come out down here. Okay, so I've got to fix that with this serger. But I wanted to get really up close for you guys to see. This is the Airflow 3000. So this machine threads the uh, upper and lower looper threads and the needle threads with automatic threading systems and it uses a shot of air to poof the thread through all of the gizmos and cracks and crevices that are inside here so you don't have to do that manually. I love the price point on this machine. It's insane how reasonably priced it is compared to others on the market. I have white thread on it already and I want to change the white thread. I'm going to I don't have a gray, so I'm just going to use these green. Now with a serger, you can use either a three thread or a four thread. I'm going to go ahead and thread it with four threads. And, and that means you can either use both the loopers and only thread one needle, or you can use both the loopers and thread both needles. So this is the lower looper, upper looper, uh, needle, right needle, left needle. Threading can be tricky when you don't have an airflow system because you've got to thread the upper looper first. You got to remember which one is the upper looper. I actually had taken a Sharpie on my old machine and wrote UL right there on this one so I knew. So the first thing you want to do is remove the little catcher tray. Okay. Let me have my little snips here. And ideally, if your machine is pre-threaded, what you would do is just tie, clip this, tie a knot, and pull the thread through by running a scrap under the foot and let it run. And then once the looper threads are already attached and good to go, because those don't go through the needles, so you can run those knots through the machine then you would change out your needle threads after that. So, okay, because knots won't go through your, the eye of your needle. Let me put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Over here on the side, this is your hand wheel and you turn it towards you exactly like you do on a uh, domestic sewing machine. And I wanna point out, let me get in real close so you can see. I'm gonna point out to you on this hand wheel, there is a dial that it, it has a line on it. So here's the line that's on the hand wheel and here's the line that's on the side of the machine. When you're using the airflow part of this, this line needs to be lined up right here where that black line is like right there. So, and I'll show you why. When you open the machine, 
you there's a a little lip right here on the side you just pull this and this door opens and then this door you want to pull this it slides over there's a spring right down here and it slides on the spring and flops down and sits just like that here are the two holes for the lower looper there's an l and the upper looper there's a u all right so that's how you you can kind of tell the lower looper is here so you know the lower looper is the farthest over on the thread stand and then your upper looper is the next one in do not put oil in these holes there's a little oil can with a red line through it this is not for oiling and then this is your airflow button right there to get a burst of air down here on the front you've got this lever okay and there's a like a an o with a straight line through it and an arrow that's the airflow and this knob moves up and down and right up here it's difficult to see because it's kind of imprinted in the plastic without color but this shows a whole bunch of stitches so the when it's down that's you, what you use for airflow and when it's up that's what you use for sewing so let's get our noses way in here and look at what is inside this machine see these two little do lollies right here you guys I do not know what these are called so bear with me they have little openings on them that connect to two little jets that come out so when I turn the hand wheel you can see those little things go up and down like the pedals on a bicycle and the stitches are being made okay so see that again I'm going to turn it one full revolution again and so these little things go up and down like the pedals on a bicycle and you can see the thread going through those okay now you want to get them where they're almost parallel like that and then we're going to make sure that this line is lined up with that black line when the line on the hand wheel is in perfect alignment with the line the black line on the case of the machine then these little tubes these little feet are all they're in perfect alignment okay let me back out just a little bit so i can show you what i'm going to do and then we'll do it again so now i'm on sewing and this is on airflow so watch what happens to the little the little cups that are on the end when i push this down nothing happened and that's because the hand wheel is not in perfect alignment there so i just gave it a little twist and these two tubes came out and completed the thread track from here to here so let me put this back up that pulled the little feet back in the little tubes so watch they just came out and when I pull it up it came back in and it's hard to see so I'm gonna get you real close so you can see it and so now you know I'm turning this lever okay let me get you in super super close all right so you're close enough now you can see the thread all right so I'm gonna turn the lever down and look at that those tubes came out of the airflow threading system and connected right into those little cups to complete the track for the thread to flow through for both the upper and lower looper that's the mechanics of how this works i'm going to turn the lever back up and the little tubes are going to go back in see just like that okay so now you understand what the lever has to do and if your knob is off alignment see i just moved it just a tiny bit now watch i'm going to move the lever and the little tubes did not come out if i nudge the hand wheel there it is so if you push your lever down and the tubes don't come out adjust your hand wheel just a teeny tiny bit and they will pop right out and get and connect that airflow track so let's thread this thing now. So as I said, ideally, when you change your threads, what I like to do, if you should already, you may have threads already in there, just pull this up and cut these, okay? And 
take the cones off and you want to do your loopers first, your, uh, either one of them is fine. This is how industry rethreads and this is the way you would ideally want to rethread a serger. So we're going to do it like this the first time and then I'm going to take you through and show you how to do it if there's no thread in your machine or if it became unthreaded for some reason or whatever. And I just do a single knot, tie it tight. I'm going to close this up and you would just take a scrap and put it, I lift the foot, lift the toe of the foot just a little bit and I'm running it right next to the knife and um, what I will do is open up my tension discs to like one or two and that way the knot will flow through. All right, so now you can see I have got the looper threads. See the green? Now they're all loose and loopy because my tension was loose to allow that knot to go through. That is how I normally change my threads. Now I will drop my tension back down to four, which is mid-range on the tension, and then I can, I'm making a mess here. Let me put my little cup, my little catcher cup there, okay. And now I'm gonna trim this off just a tiny bit. All right, so now look at this. I have a perfect stitch. So now my loopers, and it stretches, which is nice. That's why you use these on knits. So now my loopers, your stitch should ride right on that edge, your looper stitch. Mm, I might could tighten up my upper looper just a just a tiny tiny bit but I like that stitch it's beautiful and it stretches and then right there those two white lines are your uh, your needle threads okay so everything else is the loopers doing its job let's say I don't have any thread in this thing at all up here on the thread tree there are numbers one and two each one has a one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So I start with the upper looper thread. You're gonna wanna take your thread and you're gonna come up from behind the thread tree and you're gonna come, bring it through number one, go underneath and come back up and come out through number two, like that. So you're gonna, in effect, there's a little V right there, so you're gonna wrap the thread around from one, go underneath and come back out number two, like that. Once you get it through this number three thread guide right here, you'll hear it click in. I usually roll the tension dials down to a two or a one so that they're nice and loose and it can flow in there. And then you just need to hold on to the end and you want to pull about 12 to 16 inches of thread. Here, it's in my hand. You want, you want quite a bit of thread pulled out, okay? And then I'm going to take the end of it, I've got the end of the thread, and you only need to put about a half of an inch into the upper looper hole. And I'm just going to pop that in there. And just drop it. Just make sure it's in there just a little bit. You don't have to put it in any two or three inches or anything like that. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the lower looper. I'm going to put this on the machine. All right. I'm going to come from behind and I'm going to go down through number one and around and then down through number two click that into the thread guide on top of the machine and bring it down into the tension discs. I'm going to pull a good bit of length out. All right, make sure that's in there. There is a thread guide right here. I'm going to make sure that's behind there. And then I'm just going to drop the end into 
the L hole for lower looper and just push that in there a little bit. Okay. Now, the airflow tubes are connected to the little cups, so the airflow track is complete. So I've got this down on airflow. I've got my lines lined up from the hand wheel to the line on the machine, and everything is connected in here. Okay. I'm going to zoom in real close. And all I'm going to do is press this button and the threads are going to fly through and just fly out. <laughs> so it happens really, really, really quick. So don't blink. Ready? One, two, three. Look at that. Okay. So here's the upper looper thread. There it is. It went and it, it came right out. It came right out of here. In my old 1034, there was a hole right there. I had to manually thread it all back up inside. But it, this tube comes out here and it brought out that thread. And then here's your lower looper thread. So here is the tube from this one that went up inside and did all its things and all the nooks and crannies and it came out right here. In my 1034, there was a hole right there I had to thread. So there's the lower looper. That's pretty slick, isn't it? Pretty slick. You're like, show me again, show me again. Okay, yeah, let me show you again. I'm going to cut these, and I'm just going to pull them through. Let's do it one more time because it is so cool. I'm going to back out just a little bit so you guys can see. All right, I'm going to take my upper looper, and I'm going to pull a good bit out. That's the trick. If you forget to do that, if you just pull it down and try to put it in there, you'll be like, how come it's not coming through? And that is why it needs a lot of slack in order to be able to run through the track. I'm going to pull this good bit out. Okay, pop that in the hole. Just push that in there a little bit. You only need a half an inch. So however much. Okay, ready. One more time. One, two, three. Ta-da! So there is my or upper looper thread, and here's my lower looper thread. And they came through. Is that too cool? Okay, I just love doing that. <laughs> it's so cool. All right, I'm gonna roll my tension discs back to four. So I've got a good place to start. And I'm going to put my airflow knob back up to sewing. And these threads, I'm going to take them and put them back here through the throat of the machine and just pull them to the back like that so that they're back here where they go. So I'm all done with that. Now we need to thread the needles. I will show you the big picture and then we'll get up close and see everything, okay? So the needles do the same thing. You have a one and a two and on the needles, I'm gonna start on the outside and there's a method to the madness on that and work my way in and I've got my tension disc down on like a one okay and there is a color-coded thread track to show you where all of these threads need to go on the front right here there is an R and an L there are buttons for R and L that's right and left needle for when you're gonna thread okay so we'll put it on left for right now. You've seen this before, so I'm gonna do it real quick. Come in from behind, wrap around the thread tree bar, and go through thread guide number three, and come down here. Okay, now, let me zoom in so you can see. I want you to notice, so here's the yellow thread path. That's the left needle. There's a little bar right there, and one thread goes on one side of it and the other thread goes on the other side of it. So I'm doing the left first and that little bar, it's a little flange that is right here and that's what it's talking about. So I'm going to go follow the thread path and I'm going to come down on the left side of that little flange. Okay. There, this right here, this thread guide, it's, I just hold it with my finger and I push back behind Okay, now the method behind the madness of threading the left needle first is that this one is scooched over here 
into this end. And now when the right one comes down, it doesn't have to cross over or anything. They just kind of line up the way they're supposed to. All right. There is a little notch right here. I'm going to bring the thread up into that. And this is a little ball cap brim. That's not what it's called, but that's what I call it. The little ball cap brim. That's thread guide number seven. And there is a thread cutter right here. You bring this up and over. And there's a little button that you press to thread the needles. So let me do that. You want to make sure that it, you're popped onto the L and it threaded. And sometimes it's helpful to have a pointer or a pair of tweezers or something to pull that tail out. Get that out of there. Okay, there's that one. And now the right needle. I'm going through the thread path on the front of the machine. So I'm coming down, this is the right needle, and I'm following the green thread path. Okay. And I'm going to push this under here. And now I want to come down on the right side of that little flange. I'm going to put my tension back to four on both of these. And now I'm going to hold this and I'm going to take the thread and run behind thread guide number six. That there. Okay. I'm going to take the button and pop it to the R. And I'm going to come up in this little notch and go over the ball cap brim, cut my thread, and it threaded. Okay, take this and pull this through. Excellent. All right, that's great. So now let's stitch another scrap here. Just gonna lift up the toe and put that just right next to the knife. I like that. That turned out beautiful. Look at that stitch. Just gorgeous. Okay, so I am ready to fix that shirt now. Okay, I am just going to start a couple of inches above and then stitch down. All right, here we go. I think it'll make it through another washing or two. There we go. It's all sewn up. It's way up under the underarm. Nobody will see it. But those Carhartts are pretty expensive, so I'm glad to be able to save that shirt. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, we will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.